Michael Wolf back again for installment five on our series of short videos for your first introduction to parallel programming using OpenACC. So here we're going to be looking at the C++ program again. In our last installment, we inserted some data clauses and used explicit data management to move data to and from the GPU. And what we found was rather disappointing. It slowed down by a heck of a lot, like factors, like decimal factors, which is exactly what we don't want. How do we solve this problem? Well, the basic problem is the data bandwidth between the host memory and the device memory is just too slow. Too slow meaning you're running at I.O. speeds, not at memory speeds. When we have Pascals connected to power systems with the higher bandwidth NVLink hardware, that will be alleviated somewhat, but it's still an order of magnitude slower than your memory bus. We're still going to want to manage memory as carefully as possible. Let's see how to do that. Now, I hope you've been working through these programs uh, on your own. So we're going to add one data directive around this outer while loop. It's ACC data, which is saying, I'm not doing any parallel computation. I'm managing data movement to and from the device memory. In this case, I want to copy all the data over to the device that I need and make sure any results get copied back. So the input arrays are going to be the A matrix and the B right-hand side vector, and then the two result vectors, x1 and x2, are going to be copied over and the results copied back. So let's put the, the B inside the copy in, and I'm going to continue this to the next line. Have x1 and x2 in a copy clause. Copy clause means data gets copied over and results get copied back. The other possibilities that we could that we have saw the last time was copy out, which means only bring the results back. And then there's a create clause as well, which allocates the data on the device that does not initialize it and does not bring results back, which you use when you're really optimizing the uh, data traffic for performance. I follow the data clause with a curly brace structured region around the while loop. I'm going to build this exactly the same way that I built the last version of the program. So I've added essentially one directive, in this case, to manage data movement to and from the host. What's going to happen when I get to this inner loop? It's going to see this copy in clause and say, oh, that data is already present on the device, so I don't need to move any data at all. It's already there. I'll use the data that's already there. It's going to say it's going to implicitly determine that X old and B need to be copied in, but oh, that data is already there that x new is being computed in its results. There's are new results that are going to need to come back, but oh, that data is already there. So I'm just going to leave the data over there on the device, and we'll have essentially no data movement inside this loop. Let's build this. Well, that's a significantly faster than what we saw before. So here's the uh, informational messages about the data construct the copy in for the A and the B vectors, and the copy clause for X1 and X2. Now inside the loop here, actually X1 and X2 don't appear. It's X old and X new, which are pointers that are swapped between each other, between X1 and X2 for each iteration of the loop. But the OpenACC runtime actually uses the host address, not the name of the variable, to determine whether the data already exists on the device. And since X old and X new are equal to either X1 or X2, both those data are already on the device, and so no data movement is necessary. Let's go back to our profile and see what the performance really looks like and that we actually have removed all the data traffic. I'm running this latest version of the program with a size of 200. For this particular profile case, I could have run the larger matrix size and just reduced the maximum number of iterations. You might do that in your profile and uh, see what the differences are. It might be a little bit more illuminating than running with the small matrix size where the kernels are actually so small they don't take any time whatsoever. And we'll dive into this inner loop. Still looks like there's some data traffic there, but what we're going to see is that data traffic is for the eight bytes copied in for the summation result of the residual. So eight bytes copied into the device, the result copied back afterwards. And here we have our three kernels with no other data traffic inside this loop. Where is the data traffic? We're going to scroll back out here, go to the very beginning, and it's, it's outside the loop entirely. So 
Before we enter the loop at all, that's where I'm doing my 320k bytes. That's the matrix A, and down here are the, uh, the other vectors, the x1, the x2, and the b vectors. So this performance looks pretty good. The Fortran program is exactly the same, so I don't think I need to show that. You can do that on your own. But there's other ways we could improve this performance. Let's zoom back out to the body of the loop. In this case, I was running with a matrix size of 200 by 200, so these kernels are pretty, pretty fast. Let's try rerunning this with a much larger matrix size, and we'll limit the number of iterations so that uh, it doesn't take all that long. We'll go to a 2,000 by 2,000 matrix, and we're only going to do 100 iterations. I'm going to rerun this, generate a new timeline. As you can see, it does not converge because the 2,000 by 2,000 takes about 9,000 iterations to converge. But we're only looking for the time. The time is independent, more or less, of the number of iterations. It does the same work every time around. And here's our timeline. Notice how much time is spent just managing the initial context, but we're focused here on this part. So now we're going to look at this part here. So this is roughly one iteration of that while loop. This is the matrix vector multiply kernel, and then we have our two kernels to do the partial summations and then the final accumulation for the residual computation. But what about all this dead time here? There's 30 milliseconds there. What's going on during that 30 milliseconds? Well, here the host has launched that kernel, now it's waiting for that kernel to finish. Here the host has launched the 8-byte data movement, and the two compute kernels and the 8 byte bring the data back and now it's waiting for that result. And while it's waiting, the host isn't really doing anything. Is there a way we could improve this by doing something on the host instead of just waiting for the device to finish? Why don't you try to solve that problem and we'll investigate that in our next installment. <laughs>